Hey YouTube, this is Rushika again. So this would be my 33rd video tutorial on data stage and it's 9th video tutorial on transformer stage. I mean it's part 9 of transformer stage. So in the previous tutorials I discussed about the uh, type conversions, string functions, mathematical functions and all those functions. So yeah, we pretty much covered almost all the important functions with examples and all that. Uh, if you guys didn't follow my uh, previous video tutorials, please do follow uh, my channel name is tutorial. So, yep, uh, so we are left with like a few functions which are not really used often. But yeah, why to, <laughs> why to just leave them, right? Just even though I'm not giving an example, I try, I'm trying my level best to make it as clear as possible. Uh, except a few functions which like doesn't make sense to me also because I didn't ever uh, use them okay anyways so this uh, is just the theory part uh, I mean I do have examples but just the screenshots okay so I I will not get into the uh, data stage machine okay I mean data stage environment so yep so this is the obviously it's additional functions and transformer stage okay so the next, uh, so there are like a few uh, functions in the transformer stage. So uh, second or first one is last row handling functions. So uh, if you see here, these this is how I show my examples. Okay, in this video tutorial. Okay, so yeah, last row handling functions. So this is one of the functions in the transformer stage, and it's used. Yeah, uh, it's, it 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 is used often, but depends on the scenario and everything. Okay. So last row, obviously I need not explain what is last row, right? Last row means obviously if you have, uh, I mean, if you use this function, it just gonna have uh, an output. I mean, it just gonna give some output so that we can know that is the, that that row or that specific row is the last row, okay? So yeah, so basically if you see here, it indicates the last row in a job, but it doesn't mean that uh, the, all the things in the last row it, it indicates the last row per partition okay so as uh, if, you, if you're if you're following my previous video tutorials from start I mean from beginning uh, I have been saying that my uh, machine my personal uh, data stage machine which I have been uh, making videos on that has only two nodes so it divides I mean so when I'm trying to run the data it has two partitions right because it's two node right so if you see here, last row, uh, how many rows do we have? 3 through 6, 9, uh, 12 and 13 rows. So 13 rows and obviously if, if, you, uh, if, you, uh, if you learn about partitioning and parallelism, probably in my fourth video or something on partitioning and parallelism. So you see that uh, the pa partitions, uh, e even, even distribution among the nodes, right? So because there are 30 row, 13 rows, one uh i mean one node has like six and one the other node has like seven okay so whenever there has six rows so this partition among this partition if you follow my cursor please so if you if you see this partition this row is last row okay so that's the reason this is numbered one and if you follow uh, if you see this partition this row is the last row okay so that's the reason it has one in this okay if it's uh, if if it's last row, the output gonna be one, and if it's not the last row, the output gonna be zero. That's it. Okay. And last row in group, it's pretty much same as the last row function, except that it gonna uh, it gonna it, it gonna show uh, the la which is the last row in that specified group. So obviously, uh, grouping uh, for yeah, uh, grouping right. So grouping obviously we need to do sorting. So yeah, you can just have like link sorting or perform hash partitioning on group by things and all that. Or otherwise you can just uh, perform like dummy sorting, no need to, I mean, if you if you have already uh, sorted based on the key columns, so just use the dummy sort stage. And uh, if you remember, uh, uh, if you have remembered my sort stage, just don't sort previously grouped and all that. So you can just use that so that it will have uh, less uh, use, use of less resources okay anyways uh, so yeah it gonna it uh, once you sort and group based on a key column then based on that key column it gonna give uh, the last row in that specific group or in that specific uh, key column of that group okay 
so if you see here I sorted it based on my department number so department number is my key column okay in this example so if you see here last row in group okay so I'm giving it asks us to uh, it, it always asks us to give some input column okay so I choose department number as my uh, key column here or grouping column I can say so how many departments do I have I have three different departments so I want to know what is the last row in each department okay so if you see here 30 how many uh, I do have like a uh, three three six okay six department I mean six different rows on 30 right but I'm worried about I mean I mean only concerned about the last row in this 30 so if you see here last row in group this is one right so this means that this is the last row in this specific group where department number is 30 okay so next is 10 10 uh, I do have only two records so one is obviously zero because that's the first record and the last one is one because that's the last record in uh, where department number is 10 grouped by 10 okay and next is 20 and all of this are zero except the last record so this this is how uh, it gonna work last row in group okay so pretty much same they are close enough but uh, just make sure that you need to have like a uh, hash uh, I mean not hash uh, just sorted based on some group uh, some key column and yeah you can you can try it yourself okay and that's pretty much about the last row handling functions there are only two I guess okay so yeah you need not uh, you need not worry how to de give derivations and all that because yeah I took the screenshots of this okay next is logical functions logical functions uh, I just want you to know what are the logical functions okay so uh, bit and basically these are like uh, bitwise operations if you uh, if you have learned like in uh, probably some uh, some like uh, probably in schooling I guess yeah you learn I mean when you have like computer uh, knowledge you know what is bitwise uh, oper operators right so even though you don't know bitwise, bitwise operators I'll try to explain like uh, easiest way not the actual or uh, not the uh, standard way but I'll try to explain the easiest way because uh, yeah I can't explain I can't make another video tutorial and what are the bitwise operators and binary thing and all that so I'll try to make it in the easiest way okay so yeah so bit and is first operation so bit by bit and means it it is just bitwise and operation it performs and operation but bitwise okay so nothing to worry about so if you just give bit and uh bit and if you choose the bit and operation or function in the transformer stage it's gonna ask for two values or two columns okay so whenever uh in my case i gave two values okay you can choose two columns if you want uh, but they need to be pro uh, they need to be like numeric or integer I guess okay uh, they can be decimal too uh, so the binary representation so what it does is as soon as we give two numeric uh, numeric values this gonna uh, each each numeric value or both of the numeric values are first converted into binary form okay and then it performs after once they are converted to binary form it performs an operation on that binary form and then gives the output uh, output based on the, uh, like uh, based on the uh, what do I say based on this uh, output okay so let me just ex uh, explain with an example okay so I took simple numbers because it's pretty easy to understand okay four so you might be wondering uh, how did I get hundred here a hundred is it's not hundred it's a binary format of four this is how four is written in binary uh, binary format okay so uh, so just to explain how did I get this hundred okay so uh, four is uh, basically I mean as I said this is not the standard or this is not the correct way to follow but this is the simplest way I learned or uh, I learned so yeah I thought I I'll share the simplest way okay so yeah uh, so four right so whenever you have a, uh, let's say you have like four so whenever you have a number and you want to write that number uh, into binary thing divide that number by two until uh, one until you get one okay so yeah because it's small number i uh, divided by two but if it's like large number like let's say 626 you can't ra you can't divide 626 by two and reach one right so that's pretty uh, tiresome 
so that's the reason i choose uh, the simplest way for the simpler numbers there is there are a lot of methods uh, for writing binary presentation but i'm not i'm nowhere uh, going related uh, near that okay so yeah so 4 divided by 2 is obviously 2 right and 2 divided by 2 is 1 right so i got 1 so i'm going to end end here okay so you just divide the number the given number by 2 until you reach 1 okay and write that write that vertically okay vertically on the left side and on the right side what you do is for 4 it's an even number right so for even number you give 0 as a code as a binary code and 2 is also even number so you give 0 as a binary code and 1 is odd uh, sorry 1 is odd so you give 1 as a binary code so for even numbers you give 0 as the binary code and for odd numbers you give 1 as a binary code okay so yeah and after that after you have given the binary codes and divided by 2 and everything is done the binary code for which this number uh, is the binary code for which num for this number is it gonna read upwards okay from down to upwards okay it's not like zero zero one it's read one zero zero so that's a binary code of the number here okay four so if you see here one so one one zero zero so this is the way we need to read a binary code once we are done okay so that's the simplest way and 6 here, uh, see, 6 divided by 2 is 3, right? And 2, uh, again, divided, obviously, it leads to 1, right? So, and 6 is even number, so 0. 3 is odd number, so 1. And 1 is again odd, so 1. Okay, so now, how are we going to read it? It's it going to read from downwards to upwards, right? So, what's the binary form of 6 now? 1, 1, 0, right? So, here, that's the reason I have 1, 1, 0 here. And... 1100 zero, zero here okay so that's how you have a uh, binary things binary format works so now what does what it does is bit and right so and means uh, it, it it want to have like uh, both ones whenever we have like both ones it gonna take one uh, if if it if it uh, if it has zero it doesn't care if it has like both zeros here at the end it doesn't care okay and if it has like one zero and one it doesn't care and means like they need to be both ones so i mean <laughs> uh, i'm trying to explain it in like the basic way okay so yeah whenever you have like both whenever you see and it means that you need to have both ones okay two numbers as one so if you have two numbers as one you take one you uh it gonna have one and uh one zero one it doesn't matter zero and two zeros it doesn't matter zero so 100 and 100 uh, this 100 this no it's not 100 this 100 zero zero is in the binary thing right now it gonna again convert this binary format to the numeric format and then give that numeric format as our, our output okay so if you see here 100 zero zero, what is this 100 zero zero in the numeric format obviously 4 right so that's the reason our output is 4 okay hope you're uh, hope you're getting it okay and bitwise or uh, here instead of and it's or operation is performed if you if you remember here uh, i mean probably you have dealt with and and or operations so problem sql and all that so you should have uh, known all this okay anyways or is a uh, same example 4 and 6 i have taken the same numbers here so what does is uh, what does this or or operator do is Inst uh, instead of choosing like both uh, it doesn't it doesn't care uh, it doesn't care if both are one or just one it looks for just one uh, it looks for just single one okay or both one it doesn't matter but like either one this should be one or this should be one okay if either uh, the, the uh, if, if, if either of this like this or this is one okay so it takes one that's it like or function right this or this so if one is true it gonna take that but and it, it is like and this and this if both are true then it gonna take that right yeah that's the right way to put it if both are true then it gonna take that if if or is like if anything is true if any one of them is true it gonna take that okay so if you see here one and one both are true right so it it it, it's, it, it obviously takes that and if you see here 0 and 1, please follow my cursor, 0 and 1. 
and if you see here one is true zero and one so one of them is true right so again it's because it's or operator and one of them is true it's taking one and zero zero none of them is true so it doesn't matter so it takes zero okay so what is this one zero one one zero now one one zero it again converts this binary format to the numeric format which makes it six so now the output is six so for the bitwise and operator the output is four and for the bitwise or operator or logical function output is six okay so that's how uh, these logical functions function okay now bit compress bit compress is simple uh, because uh, it's the same thing uh, bit compress if, if you have like a let's say you have a binary code and you want to know what that binary code uh, does represent in the numeric form so just give the binary code you can give the binary code or you can choose the column name if you have some binary values in that column okay so it's going to display the numeric format and bit expand is let's say you don't know what uh, you don't know the binary code of a numeric code or you have a column which has all the numerics and you want you want to convert or you want to know uh, you want to know the binary code for that numeric values uh, for those numeric values in that specific column so just give the bit expand function and give the column name and it gonna represent the uh, it gonna give a, uh, output the binary format of that specific numeric value okay and bit XOR bit XOR is bit uh, bitwise exclusive operation it performs exclusive OR operation so what's the difference between OR and exclusive OR operation is I have, I have taken the same example again here okay so if you see here exclusive OR right so uh, if you see in my uh, previous here, I said that or so or means either both of them should be true or one or at least one of them should be true, right? But exclusive or means it does not count if both are true. It only counts if one of them is true. That's it. Okay, exclusive or so only if if it if it che it checks basically it checks for just one of the uh, values to be true if one is true it takes it if both are true or both are false it doesn't take it okay so that's the exclusive operation so obviously uh, one and one here so it's not one uh, both are true right so it does not take that so zero and zero and one obviously it's true because it needs only one of them to be true right so that's the reason it takes one here and zero zero obviously both of them are false so it takes zero here okay and the binary uh, now uh, now because we have the binary code uh, it's going to convert itself to the numeric thing because we need to get output in the uh, output as a numeric value right so 010 is a binary code for 2 okay so yeah that's how uh, that's how we get uh, this logical functions so and the other logical functions i mean these are the uh, these uh, the, uh, basically logical functions it, it it depends on uh, which domain you work like uh, uh, yeah like, like financial or something yeah it basically depends on like domain and what's a project you are working on it's not a regular type so what project you are working and all that okay and next is uh, not not logical function so not logical function is uh, it, it's basically a little confusing so if the value of the expression is true let's say you have given some value and uh, I, I, let's say you have given some value okay and that value is true okay true means it makes sense okay uh, so when the when that value makes sense you are using not function right so it means that the not function returns the value of false so whenever you are giving a true function uh, because you are using not function it give it gives the output as zero which is for which indicates that the false but if you give a false statement or false expression, it's false of not right, not of false. So it's uh, so now it it uh, it it returns a value that it returns a value one because that means that the statement or the expression is true. Okay, yeah, it's it's a little confusing, but yeah, uh, you need to understand that. I didn't get the right example to do, so I didn't give an example. So set bit, it's it's a little complicated and not used very often. So I just just leave it as such. Okay. So these are the pretty much the logical functions uh, that we use in the transformer stage, not in real time, but yeah, sometimes it depends on the project, uh, how big project you are in, and what domain are you in, and all that fun, all that things. Okay. 
so next is number functions number functions i really didn't give any example or i didn't get a chance to uh, use this example because they are just like the, uh, probably the type conversions because as double means it gives uh, if you know what is double uh, data type and what is a float data type so what does it function uh, what does it do is basically uh, the given the given number or the given value is output as a double uh, double okay and float is it's it, it's just float okay and integer it's outputs given the number as an integer it it <laughs> yeah these number functions you really need not worry about because it's uh, to be honest i didn't really uh, i didn't i i use uh, uh, what do i say type conversions but yeah it's pretty much uh, i don't remember recently when did i use this number functions okay honestly uh, i'm sorry uh, i can't give uh, any more explanation on that okay uh, so mantisa from decimal so if you remember from your school days what's mantisa yeah that's pretty easy so uh, if mantisa from decimal means from the decimal whatever value you have given the decimal part from that decimal part instead of displaying all things or everything it gonna display just the mantisa part okay and mantisa from d float yeah just the same that but instead of decimal now it's a decimal double float so it gives only mantisa from that double float okay so that's pretty much about the number functions i'm sorry guys i'm not getting into the details of the number functions because i'm not sure about it and uh, i don't want to uh, mess up your knowledge which i'm not sure of okay i don't want to just give you wrong information which i'm not comfortable or which i'm not sure of okay so yeah next are utility functions utility functions are basically uh, you say utility right so yeah that's uh, get environment so the first one is get environment get environment is one of the functions which basically uh, outputs what uh, outputs a value of the given environmental variable that's it okay so wh what environmental variables are given it just outputs that value uh, when you use this function okay and next is get saved input record saved input record means uh, just i need not explain right it it says itself get saved input record so you're saving in uh, saving an input record okay let me just say a uh, save input record first and then uh, get to get saved input record so it makes lot more sense then okay save input record so input record is being saved that's it okay so uh, when the save input record is called or when it is used is whenever you have like a stage variable so what happens what exactly happens i'll make a video with an example in stage variables but as of now what happens in stage variables is uh, so uh, you give a function right you give a function so it gonna uh, it it gonna basically uh, uh, save uh, it gonna check the current row and save that save that and it gonna next uh, save that current row to a, to an area to like a little memory which is called cache area okay so yeah when you want when you are writing or when you are defining the stage variables so that's when you use saved input uh, save input record so because once you save input record next next thing gonna again uh, check check with this save input record and all that happens okay i mean it depends on the how you give the stage variable things okay so basically save the input record is being saved in a small memory or a little memory space called cache area that's it okay so if you see here can call the save input record function to save a copy of the current input area to the cache area okay that's it okay that's pretty simple right yeah so get saved input record means you saved it right so input record is already saved now you are trying to retrieve the saved input record here you are just saving a copy okay saving a copy of the current input row and now here uh, now here you are trying to retrieve the saved copy of an input record okay that is previously saved to cache area okay so you, now here you just saved a copy and here you are trying to retrieve the saved copy okay uh, so this is basically used in writing loop derivation loop uh, loop derivation but uh, it's it's uh, but we can't uh, we, we we can't write it in the condition while writing condition we can't give that but while writing derivation we can use this get saved input record function okay so that's a utility function 
and the next uh, next is next surrogate key next surrogate key basically is uh, <laughs> it's next surrogate key so it's gonna give the surrogate key value which is like next next uh, let's say like the surrogate key source is uh, defined so what does what is what does that do is it gonna next it gonna output the value which is like the next surrogate key next value of the next surrogate key sorry it's not next uh, it's not nest it's next i'm sorry okay so if you see here outputs a value of the next surrogate key that's it so uh that's it i i can't really think of a best example which i can give for this function but yeah uh if you basically for that uh the surrogate key source should be defined already defined right because uh, if you don't define any surrogate key and if you choose next surrogate key it doesn't really make sense because it once you have surrogate key it then gonna give next surrogate key uh, value but if you don't have any surrogate key how can it, it work right so yeah that's uh, that's the thing and next surrogate key chain next surrogate key chain this is used in only scd uh, i mean slow slow uh, slowly changing dimension stage or scd stage okay so basically what it does is it outputs the value of the surrogate key column for the next row in the chain or the value that has been specified to use for the last record in the chain okay i'll i'll, I'll try to explain this when i when i uh, deal with scd stage okay uh, I need to make a note of it. Okay, uh, so basically, yeah, you need not worry uh, worry about it now. But yeah, you can use it in a CD stage. Okay, and previous uh, SK chain, uh, yeah, it's the same thing. But instead of next, it's the previous one. Okay, so previous, uh, it gonna uh, it gonna now uh, specify. It gonna now output the value for the first record. It, it it's last record, right? Last record in the chain. Now it's gonna record for the first record in the chain or for the previous value in the chain. Okay. That's it. And next are raw functions and vector functions. I'm not really sure what are these functions. I mean raw okay that makes sense. That's like one type of data type or something. But vector functions, I really don't know what are these vector functions and what they are used for. Honestly, I didn't ever use it in my experience. Okay, so raw functions. Raw functions are outputs the length of the data contain uh, output the length of the data in a column containing the raw data. Okay, so if you just uh, if you want to know the raw length of a specific like string or something, a uh, string or something or something, yeah. Okay, so just specify that column or the value. So it gonna now outputs the length of the data for this raw data. Okay. So that's it. And vector functions, I'm not really sure. Just reading, uh, just reading it. So, anyways, so that's pretty much about this uh, f you, uh, additional functions in the transformer stage. I'm really sorry about the number number functions. It makes sense because once you have like examples, uh, you can just uh, try it yourself. But I'm really sorry about this vector functions and raw functions to some extent. Okay, I have no idea. And as I have said. Uh, I can I can just not tell about this because I have no idea but uh, <laughs> because I don't know I just don't want to leave them uh, I'm not uh, I'm not like uh, ashamed of myself for not knowing because I'm not like a master in everything so that's okay uh, I'm honestly telling I, I haven't dealt with these functions until now Pro hopefully uh, I should get no uh, get them known soon so anyways okay so that's pretty much and i don't want to uh confuse you uh, or mess up your knowledge by giving wrong information so that's the reason i'm just honestly saying i don't know these functions or i haven't dealt with these functions okay so if you if uh, if any of you guys find a nice or good website about these examples or clearly explained website other than ibm or something so just post it as a comment i'll check it out and i'll try to uh, gain knowledge myself and if i'm very good or confident about it i'll try to make video about uh, vector functions and raw functions and number functions again with examples okay and thank you guys thank you so much for watching next video tutorial would be on probably uh, i'm not sure stage variables or loop variables probably i'll deal with stage variables okay um thank you guys thank you so much for watching